Hello and welcome to Jewish Charlotte Mason. My name is Bethany Mandel, and today I wanted to produce a video for my Jewish Homeschool 101 series about one of the most common questions that I get about homeschooling. What about socialization? How, how do your children have friends? What do they do? Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about what our life was like before COVID, in before times is what I call it. Um, and you know, hopefully these things survive in some capacity. So here are some of the things we did. We would um, take homeschool art classes and homeschool ceramics classes. Um, we would go to, um, go to field trips that were homeschool geared field trips for the, um, for the National Symphony Orchestra, for the aquarium, for the National Zoo. Um, my daughter took a, a science class at the National Smithsonian Zoo. Um, we also did after school activities, um, an Irish dance class, a ballet class, uh, a gymnastics class. Uh, there, there was a lot of stuff on our plate and uh, what we learned was too much. So we're sort of in the coming year going to scale it down a little bit. And I think that life will scale it down for us because um, we're not sure what will be open and what will survive, quite honestly. But um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, how to organize um, things. It's uh, for, for Jewish homeschooling, it's kind of um, if you build it, they will come in a chicken or the egg situation. There's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of Jewish homeschool um, groups. And in the coming year, uh, there is an opportunity for those to exist like never before. And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what, what is happening here locally to me and, and hopefully give you encouragement to, to try to form those groups yourself. So this year, um, I posted in just every Jewish Facebook group, every WhatsApp in the area, uh, just a simple Google form. Is anyone thinking about homeschooling? And I got close to 60 responses, which is unprecedented. And with that Google form, we did a couple things. We did a Zoom conversation where more experienced homeschoolers spoke to people who were thinking about homeschooling. And before we, uh, before we sort of recorded, we asked people for some questions that they had and we answered some questions. And the, the inspiration for this video series was actually based on that because there were just so many questions that I felt like I wanted to answer, not just for local friends, but for friends all around the country who've been basically asking me the same questions. Um, and so with that, um, with that Google response, um, that form, another mother created a Facebook group exploring homeschooling in our local area. And I, I used that list that I had created with the Google form and sent out um, an email to that, to that Facebook group. And that Facebook group has been pretty hopping People have been answering questions and asking questions and trying to form playgroups, um, trying to get a sense of what classes are going to be happening next year. And it's been a great organizing tool for local Jewish families to figure out what we can do socially for our children next year. In addition to that, there's been a lot of conversations in local parenting groups in general, not just in Jewish groups, about forming pods, about doing classes. And so that was another thing that I posted in a local Facebook group of parents who were thinking about homeschooling. And I said, we are following the Exploring Nature with Children curriculum next year. If anyone wants to do it with us, here's a link and here's a WhatsApp chat that we can all talk in and try to figure out um, the best time and place. And, and we're still sort of organizing that. And so I'm, I'm trying to give some examples of ways that you can organize. So I wanted to highlight um, a couple people in, the, in these video series who are much more experienced than I am. I've only been homeschooling for the last year. Um, and the first parent that I wanted to introduce you to is named Rena Barron, and she lives in Baltimore, and she is um, an organizing queen in the Baltimore um, homeschooling community. She does a lot of different activities with her children and she's organized a lot of activities. And I wanted to introduce her to you because she has so many examples of, of things that she's put together that can hopefully give you inspiration um, into things that you can do locally um, with your friends or yourself, um, trying to figure out ways to branch out socially um, so that your kids have an active social life even though they're homeschooled. So this is Rena Barron. 
Hi, I'm Rena Barron. I've been homeschooling my children for the past probably six, seven years and loving, loving it. And not only that, but I was homeschooled too by my mother. Hi, I'm Susan Lapp and I homeschooled for 16 years before it was popular, before it was as popular as it is today. I never heard the term when I started doing it actually. So we're gonna do a mother-daughter. <laughs> um, showing you how well socialized we are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm gonna start, I live in Baltimore and we're lucky here in Baltimore because we have so many from homeschooling families and Jewish homeschooling families. And we do do a lot of activities um, together. So I'm gonna just give you an example of some of the things that we do here. And wherever you live, some of these are gonna be things that you can do. And, um, and I hope it inspires you to kind of come up with new ideas and ways that you can do different activities with other homeschooling families. Basically two types of programs that we do. One is where we attend a program put on by another place. You know, there might be homeschool day at the zoo, homeschool day at the aquarium, homeschool day at the science center. A lot of these places will have special homeschooling days throughout the year where all you do is you pay a couple dollars and you attend and it's a great way to um, be with other homeschooling families and learn and um, get to see these places. The other way is where you actually create the programs for your children and other people's children. Some of the examples of this are anything ranging from... You did, new, there was newspaper club. We've done a lot, was, different clubs, right? Like, and you could do a newspaper there club. There was Lama Tess Malachos club. Right, we did Lama Tess Malachos where we went through the 39 activities that are forbidden on Shabbos and we actually did them from creating a fire and putting out a fire to um, trying to thresh, remember, yeah, yeah, weaving <laughs> and threshing weed and all of that was really fun. Um, we do monthly Rosh Chodesh Hallel groups where we do it for the women and the girls. We get together and we sing Hallel together and then we have a breakfast together, which is really fun. I've created also, for two years I did a homeschool co-op where they were run a little bit differently each year. The first year, um, different moms taught whatever was their favorite topic. Um, and moms have all these hidden talents. We had one mom teach the kids viola. We had another mom teach uh, origami. We did um, geography, history, whatever any mom was super interested in and excited about, she would teach that class to the children. And the next year, I actually hired teachers to teach the classes. And we had a lot of kids for the second year. So we actually broke it up into four groups. It was the older boys, the younger boys, the older girls, the younger girls and we had different classes for each one. The older girls had um, Hebrew language. I hired an Israeli woman and I just told her, you know, just speak to them in Hebrew and, um, and play games with them. It was just a mixture of fun um, and educational classes and I think that was enjoyed. Another really fun thing that we've done is a state fair and such a hit that we did it the next year with countries in Europe, European countries. Um, so my daughter did Italy and it was just so much fun learning all about Italy and then we followed it up actually a few days later with the lunch where everyone made a food from their country. Um, and one more thing that I forgot to mention also is that um, you can look into regular um, field trip destinations that regular schools would go to and hop on them also. For example, we go to the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra once or twice a year. They do these midweek concerts for school children. You just call them up or um, apply online and you just tell them you're a homeschooling family and um, they're happy to have you. And places like Colonial Williamsburg yes. have homeschool days and you get yeah. to go for a, a, a less of money. So, okay, okay that's it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Bye. So I have a funny story about these, these videos. So I spoke to Rena and I, I told her I, I want to have a socialization, um, a socialization video. And I know that you were homeschooled and, um, and I'm, I, I think I'm gonna have you speak. And then I have one other woman that I, I, I'd like to bring in. Um, she actually has a sister in Baltimore. Maybe you know her uh, and her name is Rochelle Stern. <laughs> I got this like dot, dot, dot from Rena, And she was like, that's my sister. <laughs>
<laughs> so we got to talking and Rena told me that um, homeschooling runs in the family. So Rena is homeschooling and she was homeschooled by her mother, Susan Lappin. And so that's who she was just sitting next to, Susan Lappin. And Susan recorded her own amazing sort of testimony into what it was like to be a Jewish homeschool parent for over a decade, 20, 25, 30 years ago. And she brings up a lot of really important big picture um, conversation about what is socialization and what is important and what, what do we want our children to socialize with and with whom and what is the priority here basically and susan brings up some amazing points that i hadn't even thought of until i watched her video about who do i want my kids socializing with and i always kind of joke that um the socialization question is actually a feature and not a bug of homeschooling because to me i like being able to be more choosy with my children's friends um, and I always joke that I, I would not choose, I would not have chosen me as a child to be friends with my children because I was a little bit of a corrupting influence for my friends. And so I love that I can have a little bit more control and that the bullying and that the cruelty that can happen in schools um, doesn't happen to my children. And, um, and that's from a protective angle, but that's also from, I don't want my children to be snotty and be nasty and they're not and I think a lot of that is because they're shielded from that general influence that can happen in schools so I wanted to introduce Susan Lappin uh, who, who sort of brings a perspective that I think is really important about socialization because she's sort of looking at it from the end of the line and and what homeschooling has done for her children and for her family as far as socialization goes. When I was homeschooling, there weren't enough kids to make a homeschool club, enough religious Jewish kids to make a homeschool club over the years. There might be two kids one year, none another year, maybe three another year. But um, one of the things that I started to question was the word socialization, because what does it mean when we say that school is important for socialization? Are we saying that my nine-year-old must know how to get along with other people who are born within 12 months of him or her and within a structured setting? You know, we, we did belong. We belonged to a co-op. It was one day a week. We were the only Jewish family. And there were about 400 kids. It was in the state of Washington. And it was very, my kids had to, my kids learned to say, I can't, you know, in a very naturally, well, oh, I'm not able to eat that. It's not kosher or I won't be here next week because it's a holiday. And I think that was really very good for them. And they were kids with, with values, the same, very much the same values as us. They were religious, they weren't Jewish, but they were religious kids. And they learned and, and they were very sweet. The teachers started when they would bring in a, a treat for a special reason, they would call me and say, what can I bring in so that your daughter can also eat? And um, But what they did is, for example, the kids got to pick what they wanted to go to because it was so big. There were so many classes. So like one of my daughters wanted to do Shakespeare, but she was doing Shakespeare with kids who were two years older than her and two years younger than her. And it was really based on a common interest rather than simply that your birth date happened to be within a certain period. And so that's socialization, but it's not exactly school socialization. It's more natural because when we grow up, we're not friends with people who are only born within the same birth year as us. And the other thing is, and you and I, my daughter and I actually share something, is which we're top heavy on girls. And so there's a lot of socialization within the family itself. And I think that sometimes gets harder to do when your kids are in school because everybody has their own activities and their own interests. And when you're home, and this is true whether you do have boys or girls or boys and girls, you have a family book that you're reading. And that means everybody's interested in the same thing. Or you might be doing, you know, in, in Washington State, state history was in fourth grade. There's no reason you have to learn state history in fourth grade versus third grade or sixth grade. So we, the year we did state history, which included a lot of trips to see places, everybody was doing it. So it creates a real bond among the kids in the family and among the kids and the parents, which is also something that sometimes when kids are in school, parents end up becoming chauffeurs and chauffeurs and the homework police and just constantly busy trying to keep track of everybody's activities instead of being part of the activities. So I think the family socialization was some, a big, it was a big thing for us in homeschooling. It meant a great deal. And I will just throw in that when my two oldest girls who were both homeschooled, 
went to high school. Again, the, the kids did have the choice. Some of my kids went to high school. Some of them didn't. And there wasn't a religious Jewish high school where we lived. So they actually went to a base Yaakov and they dormed. You know, um, one of them became the head, uh, the, was the president of the student government organization and the other was the president of her senior class. It didn't seem to have, you know, was the first day or two, they didn't know certain things. They didn't know what to do with a locker. They had never had a locker before. And I remember that was really a shock. Like, what, what do I do? What is this for? And they weren't used to the idea of raising your hand to speak. But other than that, you know, after three or four days, they just fit right in and they were, you know, this there's a myth. Sometimes parents whose children have social difficulties homeschool. And from that, you get the idea that, oh, kids who homeschool have social difficulties. But that's, it's a subset. And it's, you know, if your child does have social difficulties or if they're being bullied at school or something, homeschooling can be a lifesaver because you can really work with them on developing that. But if your kids are the type of kids who easily make friends and do make friends, then they're going to learn, they're going to socialize in a hundred different ways, way more variety than they would in the classroom. And um, I don't think they're going to have any problem. There's nothing to worry about. So the third video that I wanted to, um, that I wanted to introduce is something a little bit out of the box. And uh, I kind of wanted to throw socialization on its head a little bit because we always think about socialization in a classroom and kids become friends. And that's, that's the ideal. And I don't, I don't think that that's the ideal. Um, one of the things that's really wonderful for us as a family is we have um, the opportunity to travel and we have the opportunity to do activities that we wouldn't necessarily be able to do because we, we would be kind of tied to the school schedule. And I wanted to highlight a friend who does that to the extreme. Like we personally, and, and her sister, um, sort of mention the activities that they do that we do as well because we're also pretty local to Baltimore. We go to the symphony orchestra, we go to Colonial Williamsburg, um, we, we do a lot of those activities and, and some of those pictures you'll see here in Colonial Jamestown. We do a lot of that stuff. But um, Rochelle Stern, the sister of Rena Barron, is, is going extreme and she is RVing across the country this year. And she talked about in her video the amazing opportunities that her children are getting because they're not being sort of socialized in a regular school setting and they are making um, they're making friends and making connections in ways that they never would have otherwise so this is rochelle stern i don't know where she is at the moment but here she is hi everyone my name is rochelle stern and i was asked to share a little bit about what life is like are being across the country and homeschooling my children my three children in the process and just some of the um, surprising, wonderful parts of it, as well as some of the more challenging parts. I'll share it um, in this quick little clip. There's a lot of diversity in the campgrounds, um, in both um, the types of people, the ages of people, people's backgrounds, of course, people from all over the country. And um, that's been such an unusual experience for uh, my children and for us to be able to meet uh, so many different types of people and when they're your neighbors even if only for one night like tonight we just pulled up to this campground about two hours ago and we'll be leaving at eight in the morning because we have a busy day tomorrow um, but yet we've already made friends with a lot of people and the kids especially have made friends it's forced them to go out of their comfort zone and for example we have a veteran in one of the RV sites next door to us and they um, they had to talk to him earlier tonight and then they ran off and were playing hide and go seek I'm not sure where but they are with some other children that they met in the RV park so that's really interesting now from a point of view of homeschooling um, it's so much easier than I expected um, everywhere you go there's just opportunities for them to learn and ask questions for example uh, we've been through about eight states so far and we left Florida let's see if I can remember we left Florida we headed over towards up the coast of the Panhandle um, through the Gulf of Mexico to Alabama from Alabama we went over to Louisiana from Louisiana we went to Mississippi um, in Mississippi one of the memorable um, 
locations that we stopped at was the Civil War battlefield in Vicksburg. And I had explained to the children a little bit about the Civil War beforehand. My oldest, who's in, who just finished fourth grade, had obviously learned about the Civil War. My second oldest is seven with learning disabilities. So he uh, technically is in first grade, but I've been homeschooling him. Um, for the last couple of months, even before COVID-19 hit, due to the school not being able to handle him and his needs. And I have found it to be transformative. He has gone from um, being a quote-unquote problem child to thriving uh, with this homeschool model. And he actually, so I had started to work on um, some history with him you know, before this RV trip, just looking at the maps and really preparing for the RV trip. And he, when we got to Vicksburg, he, the dots all connected for him. And it was amazing. Like a child like that who has um, any type of learning disabilities, he has dyslexia, he's ADHD um, on the spectrum. He, he, kids like that thrive when you are learning in person uh, through immersive hands-on experiences and this trip is could not be better for a child like that um, and then my youngest is four so of course it's a different experience for a four-year-old I'm not so sure that he'll remember it but it's amazing in its own way the fact that he's socially being forced to um, spend time with children his siblings for one um, on an extended period of time and other children in the RV parks who are not his age um, or children that he sees on a regular basis. So every day he's being forced to make new friends and adapt to a new environment, which is amazing. And for children usually who, especially our children at home, everyone has their own bedroom, their own bathroom. Um, there's not really, uh, they're not forced to interact together um, for extended periods of time because they go off to school usually and everybody is apart the whole day and then they come home and there's maybe, you know, an hour of together time during dinner and that's it. So this is a whole different experience and it's been amazing. Um, and I think I've kind of babbled on enough. I'm going to say goodbye to you guys, but um, I hope this was helpful and um, um, any questions, feel free to send me a message on Facebook. Uh, my Facebook name is Rochelle Lappin, L-A-P-I-N, Stern, S-T-E-R-N. Take care. Bye. So that was Rochelle talking about the crazy thing that she's doing that I'm super jealous of. Um, and I, I wanted this video to be a little bit of, um, of, a, of a trick. <laughs> Normally people ask me the question, you know, how do your kids make friends? And it's, I mean, it's the same answer that ever, like, they go places and then they make friends. They do camp, they do classes, uh, they theoretically go to shul, you know, who knows, but um, there's there's a lot of different activities out there in which they make friends and it requires more work on my part, absolutely. I have to reach out to the parents, we have to plan play dates, um, I have to investigate different homeschool classes and, and different after school classes to make sure that my kids are getting out and making friends. And um, it's not easy, but at the same time, I feel like my kids are better off socially because um, they're they're shielded from the bullying and they're shielded from um, a lot of the bad influences in school. And my kids are really close. I, I have a, a six-year-old, a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old, and they are a tribe. And to me, at the end of the day, that is that friendship and that relationship between each other and, and for us also as parents and our children, that is the most important relationship. And, and I ultimately don't care if they're friends with Judah down the block. Um, I'm much, I'm, I care much more if my siblings are friends and they, and they have formed this amazing relationship that hopefully will take them through the rest of their lives. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, please click like on this video. And I look forward to chatting with you the rest of the summer, answering sort of the questions that I get about what, what does it mean to be a Jewish homeschooler and how, how does one do this? So thank you so much. And I will chat with you again soon.